Hello and thanks for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about intercompany transactions. Now, if you've seen our other videos about intercompany transactions, you'll know that Acumatica has this functionality throughout the finance sections, through accounts receivable and accounts payable. But in this video, we're going to talk about how you can do it through the distribution module, meaning I can create a sales order, ship it, and have the purchase receipt automatically created or vice versa. So let's get started. What we'll do is we'll start off with some of the basics that you may have seen in our other video, but I'm going to go over it again. So if we go to companies, here's where our companies are laid out. And if we take a look at our capital company, for example. So at the top of the screen, you have this actions menu. This allows you to extend this company as a customer or a vendor. So you can see here, I've already extended it as a vendor. So it'll let me see it. So if I click on view vendor, it'll show the vendor profile and it's all linked to that particular company. Now, if we go back and we open up, for example, the services company over here, because we have branches, there's no option to extend this as a customer. But instead, if we drop into our branches, we take a look at, for example, services East and you could see our services East is in fact a customer. So for our example, let's take our services east, we'll switch into that company. You can see the theme change at the top. And what we'll do is we'll create a purchase order, create a purchase order to that capital company we saw earlier. So we'll select capital. Notice it shows up here as a vendor because it is a vendor. We'll add an item. Now, when we save it, one of the things we'll cover in another video is Acumatica has extended its workflow operations over to purchase orders as well. So whereas there's a checkbox for releasing the hold, we now have nice buttons up here. So we'll remove the hold and my company requires approvals for purchase orders. So we'll approve it as well. And now we can do a couple of things. We could generate our sales order from this purchase order, right from here. Or if you go and search for intercompany, you will see two new options, generate intercompany sales orders and generate intercompany purchase receipts. So in this case, if we click on generate intercompany sales orders, you now see there's actually a couple of sales orders, including the one we just created here where we can select these and process them into sales orders. Now, if we go over to sales orders, we'll take a look and we can see the sales orders here. This is to the customer name services East. That's us. We happen to be signed in there. That's where we created our purchase order from. We open it up. What you can see in the sales order now, if you go to the addresses tab, that's a brand new tab. Used to be Acumatica had shipping settings and shipping addresses all in one tab. They've split that out. But at the bottom of the screen, you could see a related order type for the purchase, intercompany purchase. This shows up because it was generated through an intercompany process. And you could also get a link to the purchase order. Now, if we open that up and we take a look at the other tab, you can see the same thing there. There's a sales order number and we can click back and forth. Now, additionally, if we go back to our sales order and we create a shipment out of it, we'll leave the settings alone and we'll simply confirm the shipment. What you now see here we go over to generate intercompany purchase receipts. You can see here, 
The system now wants to create our purchase receipt because we ship that item. So if we click process all, we select the one and click process. Now, if we take a look at our purchasing purchase receipts, you can see we created it on hold. That was the option there. And here's our purchase receipt and it's linked to that sales order. Again, the vendor is Revision 2 Capital. That is one of our other companies in the system. So if we remove the hold and release it, now if we take a look at the financial part of this, what we did was we purchased and brought it into our wholesale warehouse. Let's take a look at our warehouses for a moment. Notice our wholesale warehouse is tied to product wholesale. That's the branch that the wholesale warehouse is part of. So when we buy these items and we receive them into stock, we're incrementing that value of that asset account. So if we go back to our purchase receipt and we click on other, notice there's a few things going on here. First off, you can see the related shipment number, 3523. That's the shipment we had over here, we shipped out. Additionally, if we take a look at the inventory transaction and we open up the actual GL batch, notice what we did here. We debited our inventory asset account in the product wholesale company. We credited our inventory purchase accrual for $12.50 as well. So that will get debited as soon as we create our AP bill. But also notice product wholesale now has a liability. This is the due to, due from intercompany transaction functionality in Acumatica. So it automatically created these entries because product wholesale received $1,250 worth of merchandise, but didn't pay for it. So it's now owed to Services East because they did pay for it or they will pay for it once it gets invoiced. Now, if we go to the flip side of the shipping document, close this down, and look at our shipment. You'll see your inventory reference number here as soon as we prepare the invoice. We'll post this invoice, release it. Now, if we go back to the shipment number, good way to find your inventory transaction. Click on the orders tab. We'll open up the inventory issue document, issuing out of stock. And if we go to financials and we look at the batch, so that's what happened here. So when we issued this out, we credited our inventory with the 1249.98, which is the cost of these items. We debited our cost of goods inventory as well. And then here, capital owes $1,249.98 to product wholesale because we sold that item to them. Now with this invoice, if we go to our financials tab, take a look at the batch number here. You can see we now have a debit to accounts receivable, but we use a related company AR. So you could choose a different AR account for this. And then of course we hit sales revenue. Now, when we go and pay this, depending upon what account we pay it out of, we can get some additional do tos and do froms. So this is an invoice to Services East. We're paying Services East, but our payment method is going to get tied to a certain checking account. So, for example, if we pay this invoice with maybe product wholesale, and if we release this, take a look at the financial details here. You can see we debited our company checking account from product wholesale, and that offset our accounts receivable on the capital side. However, product wholesale owes $1,250 to pay for capital. 
So there's the balancing entry there. Just a refresher on this, if we go over to intercompany transactions, mapping, this is where we map the branch. So under services east, you can see there's a capital entry here. So this is our originating branch. This is the transaction originating in the branch capital. So it originates here and it uses this liability account to offset. And then in the destination side, notice we have these branches mapped, but we're using the asset account of do from. So that's how that works. So that's cross company sales. The ability to generate sales orders and have your counter purchase receipts get generated or vice versa. And all the GL transactions that come along with it. If you have any additional questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing to our channel and have a great day.